Okay, when we finished off last time, we unlocked the developer's commentary, so to speak. So this time, supposedly the developer's, the developer's commentary just sort of uh, is filtered in at random points in a playthrough. So we're going to run through as much as we can and see as much of the developer's commentary as we can. I suppose we'll start from the very beginning, and just fly through, and we'll stop and start whenever I find something new to talk about. Oh, right away. Hello there, it's me, the author of Zodiac Trial, here for some sick narrator's commentary. I don't know if anyone will really want this feature, but if you do, here you go. I'll be popping in occasionally to give some insider info on this whole story. Starting with this scene. This was, in fact, the first scene written, a dialogue between the game's two main antagonists, Monkey and Rooster. Well, I'd argue technically in the context of the story, the two main antagonists would be Monkey and Brian, but I digress. I mean, you have a fair point, but, uh... Yeah, by virtue of uh, Monkey manipulating Brian, I'd say it's uh, fairly clear that Rooster fits into the... Okay. Anyways, this bit sets up a lot of the themes that the story was built off of. So it does serve slightly more of a purpose than just an ominous prologue. It really does. It really it sets up the twist. Also, fun facts. The cards used for that one background are comically oversized. Fun. Bring my eyes, I find that I can actually see again. I think the decision to just, to, to just drop the player right in the death game was good. Why waste time with pointless backstory? Let's get to the good stuff. Uh, yeah, I agree. Even though there's not really a mechanical rep repercussion for this, for this, the pairs everyone woke up in is really how I think of the characters in my head. Those are their groupings to me. Starting Mouse off with Ox, the most straightforward character of the bunch, hopefully sets him up as something of a partner figure in the player's eyes. At least that was the intent. Obviously, that seemed to that seemed to work well in the eyes of the, the folks watching this series on my channel. This section right here is to ease people into the idea of choice. A little silly, I know, but slow steps are important. That said, I think it might give off the wrong idea that the choices don't matter. But it got into the game, and so it stays. This is the. Uh, Discussion point. A man and woman arguing at the other side of the room caught my eye, but before I knew it, we were approached by the other two people present. Here we meet here we meet Bunny and Tiger. Both of these characters ended up a lot differently than how I had originally envisioned them. Tiger was ori originally going to be a lot more combative before I leaned more into the optimistic gimmick with her. And Bunny wasn't originally going to be as big of an asshole as he ended up, but after making him an asshole in other one of the routes. I figured it'd make a lot more sense to lean into that. That decision was for the best, I think. For the story, themes, etc. to work, I think you needed one hidden pure asshole in the group, and I view Bunny as that asshole. Yeah, Bunny works as an asshole, the way it was. The asshole with the pretty face and the claims to good intentions. It works well for him, especially with how he seems to come full circle to, towards the end. Where you can either encourage him to rat out all of his criminal friends and go to jail, or actually see through his original good intentions of reforming the police. Hey, friendly man. Good. Get out of here, buddy. Get out of here. Here we come to Snake and Dragon. These two, I feel, in a lot of ways, are the pillar stones of the cast. Ooh, interesting. Not that they always take the leading roles, or are the most important, or whatever. But like, in filling out the cast, these two archetypes were the first ones I wrote in. I knew I wanted the suspicious, intelligent guy who let me go on a bunch of tangents. That I knew I wanted the shitster who didn't play nice, but ultimately was, ultimately was one of the better people in the group. Yeah, that's the... Uh, yeah. Incidentally, these two ended up being some of my favorite characters in the, in the whole game. I agree. 
They're probably up there with my favorites, too. In that, uh... You could argue that Snake got the most character development in terms of backstory and the like. I think that is accurate. Maybe aside from Dog and the immediate plot relevant characters, but... Although I feel like Dragon didn't get quite as much in the way of uh, backstory and development. She got enough, and she had plenty to, to get involved with, so to speak. She had plenty of good moments. Alright, honesty time. I think horse and sheep are two of the weaker characters in the game. Okay. And that's fine. The game needs weaker characters. In fact, I think horse accomplishes what he sets out to be. With 12 characters, they're not, gonna get, they're not all going to get equal development. He's a mostly silent threat who actually has a lot of thought behind his actions, even if he doesn't say all of it. I think he fulfills his role decently. I feel more disappointed in how Sheep came out. Like, yeah, I think she has a lot of good moments, good elements. I just think I could have done more with her character. I... Mm -hmm. Realistically, the only Sheep moments I remember... are, uh... Sheep getting bullied by Mouse. Those times they hang out together. It doesn't help that her route is, in my opinion, one of the weaker ones in the game. More on that when we get there. I'm intrigued. We'll see what we hear about that. And here we go. The villain duo. These two are opposites in a lot of ways. Rooster was probably my favorite character to write, and maybe my favorite character, period. He steals a lot of the scenes he's prominently in. This is true. Monkey, on the other hand, blends into the background a lot. And for a lot of the game, is probably viewed as the least impactful character. Incidentally, I didn't want to fall into the trope of the mastermind being the least interesting character. <clears throat> Samugi. <laughs> but whoops. Uh, that, 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 that's me. She's not the least interesting character. She's deliberately plain. She has a lot going for her, though. But she's plain in a meta sense. Enough about that, though. Either way, the two masterminds are both big characters in their own right, and I've got a lot to say about each of them. Yeah, Monkey here is actually my therapist. I found a comment on one of my planning documents. All it reads was therapist. Great joke. <laughs> I never ended up following through on this great joke. Oh, darn. Missed opportunity, I guess? <laughs> Finally, we get Dog and Pig. A friend of mine called Dog This Game Sands, and I can't describe to you how much that hit my soul. Yeah. Possibly because I can very much see where they came from. Anyway, these are the two innocent casualties for everything. They're both pretty interesting characters, and ones that, pr that provoke strong reactions. You see people really liking or really disliking either of them. I think either reaction is fair. Personally, I really love Dog, and quite like Pig, even though in a lot of ways they both suck. This is our first conversation option. This section was just to give players the first taste of choice. Who you talk to largely doesn't affect things aside from unlocking some optional dialogue on some routes. Oh, fair enough. I wonder if there's something to say about each of these. So, let's just... Boink. Oh. Hey, never mind. Nothing to say on here. Ooh. Hey, no, hold on. This conversation is the only one of them all that I really hope people would see. I think it already starts foreshadowing some of the big mysteries. It's also the conversation that can come back the most times in different ways on routes. The chessboard. The check chessboard one. Oop. Let's just run through the rest of these. See if there's anything else to s anything else to say. Take this more seriously. 
fine. Ox Dragon Monkey? Uh, full transparency, I always meant to flesh out this conversation. We got around to it. Never had a great idea on how to do it. What was this conversation? Oh, shit. Yeah. Anyone ever tell you you're a real shitty dog? Curiosity? Uh, uh, curiosity? Well, curiosity it is. Oh, it's just stopped on monkey's foot. And we didn't engage with the group. Fair enough. Dog and sheep? I'll protect you. Chill out. Man up. Okay, not really much to see there. So I mentioned in the pig interview that this whole thing was based on a short story I wrote. One of the principal inspirations I had going in to creating this story was the idea that I wanted, wanted the mastermind to use the masks to secretly talk to the group from inside the building. In that story, everyone has masks permanently locked around their heads, and the masks have voice filters, and some people's identities being anonymous, anom anonymous, anonymous is a bigger part. And there's this one character who gets executed at the start for disobeying the voice and breaking the cameras. Then one of the characters checks the body, confirms her death, and drags her outside. After it was all written, a friend who read the story said they liked it, but they thought the twist was going to be that it was all masterminded by that first victim, and the person who checked her body was an accomplice. A conversation with the judge happened using the masks they, they were wearing. It was a cool theory. The motives of all the persons involved fit. A bunch of the later events would be explained through it. They enjoyed hearing about it. And the talking while wearing the mask thing gave me the impetus to put it in here. As much as I don't like coming back to it, that the whole uh, permanent fixture of the masks and the mastermind being in amongst the group, that's, uh, that reminds me a lot of Birth Me Code. Which I never finished and I probably won't, but for reasons. But it reminds me a lot of the concept of that game. It's a shame because that concept was had a lot of good things going for it. About the game now. Originally the game of this game was completely different. This whole thing where everyone needed to collect three jade emeralds. You could only move from area to area one space at a time. Tablets were used for moving. If you had three emeralds, you could exit from the front. Once, once somebody did, there was a three-turn timer for everyone to leave. There were these things called battle rooms. Basically, it was super convoluted and poorly explained, and it didn't even give rise to cool stories. In fact, it made them harder to tell. That was the initial core of the game. A lot of shit was written with that in mind. In fact, there were a full two routes made with this framework that ended up having to be rewritten heavily. The flowchart of how to get to all those routes was completely different. And a bunch of ideas for routes that never got made. In the snake route, you ended up playing a little game of snake. Uh, really? Dragon's Turf War was completely different. Interesting. Ox ended up doing a trial thing with a blatant Red Truth rip. While, that, while I could see that fitting Ox, I kind of like how Ox's route turned out in a way, kind of taking away his agency. There were some good ideas in all of that, but ultimately I'm very glad I changed it, even if a lot of time is wasted. While... While the game is still complicated, in a lot of ways, it actually, I think it actually, it actually works. You could, you could argue that it's a bit complicated to ever really expect people to do it in real life, but it works. And you did some interesting story, story beats with it. If I had to guess, the, the slowest third will end up dead. This line was solely for smug foreshadowing reasons. 
even though it technically doesn't end up true since Rooster makes it. But still, pig, dog, rooster, monkey. Close enough. Slow is third. Whoa. Shit, good point. Pig, dog, rooster. Pig, dog, monkey, rooster. Yeah, damn. Didn't think about that. Mouse's ability to turn off her fear. I thought this plot thread would be more relevant than it ended up being. That's true. I guess it acts as a deep counterpoint to Monkey's whole thing. I sort of forget it now and then, but Ma mostly Mouse is overtaken by grief, not fear. I also thought that there would be more choices where you could choose which of these to input. That only kind of happens once or twice. Yeah, true. Like, it would have been nice to... I guess it would have been nice to, like, see... the confess option... more outside of Pig's Route, for example. We do see a lot of skills come into good use. And obviously, the routes that are based around major trinkets, we see the item function come into use. We only ever see the confess action in one route. I really thought there would be a few routes where everyone was for themselves, trying to race to the end. I thought I'd get a lot of mileage out of these me out of these mechanics. And it's true, the metagame does sort of inform all the routes in a sense. Specific abilities pop up here and there. I think Pig's Route is the only one that fully takes advantage of everything the way I intended. you yes. Yes. I guess the problem was narratively justifying it. Because there was always better options available to, to, to the people involved. And also this whole ability discussion thing goes on way longer than it should have been. This coupled with a backstory explanation coming up really kills this early pacing. But I couldn't think of a better way to handle this. I mean, yeah, but I agree that I, I couldn't, I couldn't really think of a better way to handle this either. Like the only other option would have been, uh, whatever option you could have taken to explain everyone's abilities, you would have still went into that. You're explaining 12 abilities, all in all, with the specific caveat that you have to disguise Snake's ability for his route. Backstory stuff is important because, like, they're intentionally, we know that Monkey was intentionally trying to make that part obvious, so... It's meant to inform the whole game. Even in the original plan with Brian, it was meant to inform the whole game. So... I think that part definitely had to be there. I don't know how else you could have done the skills part, but... You're right, it does kind of drag things out early on, but I don't... I agree with you that I don't really know a better way we could have, you could have done it. Yeah, despite the overwhelming flood of evidence to the contrary, my father still believed in his client. Like a good lawyer should. I think anyone savvy enough with tropes should already be expecting that Brian's father is innocent. It, you see, you see. But then we, uh, sort of big galaxy brain potential theorize, but what if you're trying to subvert our expectations and Brian's father is actually guilty? Try to really pile on how conclusive it seemed, though. What if some might fall for the idea that Aaron Morris, it was in fact the killer, there was, but there was more to Amadeus's death than meets the eye. See that that both both were reasonable conclusions, as you definitely drove home that there was corruption going on. But also drove home that Amadeus was a real nasty bastard. So. Yeah, it... 
it all really depends on how someone playing it the first time latches on to it. What they take from what they're seeing here. Because you could go both ways with it. Honestly. The group gets transfixed on this idea of X trinkets a lot. Particularly Ox. There's a time, there are times in this story where there's a better option for them if they think through it clearly. But you know, when you're in the thick of things, getting fixated on one ray of hope can happen, you know? Like, yeah, you'd, you could argue that they got hyper, hyper focused on the trinkets. When in theory, they could have. Like, we have Ox hy hyper focused on the trinkets, and everyone just kind of going along with Ox. Including Mouse. It takes Mouse kind of going outside the box and saying, wait a minute, we can. We can make this we can make this shit work if we think about it long enough. Without all the trinkets. <laughs> like the outcome <laughs> Like the outcome where sheep stockpiles a hundred thousand moves and nooms to the fucking finish line out of the speed of light. <laughs> Which was the greatest moment in this entire game. Ah. <laughs> uh. Gonna try and arrange our route exploration to explore as many routes as possible and see as much commentary as possible. Let's go with Ox first. I think that even though I personally feel like this is the default option, not a lot of people will pick it the first time. Because of uh getting to know, sp having spent so much time with Ox already and wanting to get to know the other people. Which is entirely fair. So here's pretty much the only gate other than the one at the true ending. I am slightly worried that some people might get tripped up if they do Sheep's Route before stumbling across this. If you're on the lookout for the date that it'll, the date it'll start, the Sheep's thing is pretty explicit. But if you're not, I think some might miss it and get pretty lost. Yeah, true. I, I saw this way before I got Sheep's End. But if you... get Sheep's End first somehow, before you can come to the library and try the computer, you might get really thrown for a loop. But for now, we're not we're not actually going to look at the computer. We'll do that later. I don't really have anything else to say. Okay. I'm going to try and go in order of games that I, of things how I played? I think we will. Go with Tiger and Dragon. Press. Pushing doesn't always work. Sometimes when people don't talk about it, they don't want to talk about it. Not pushing here knits you some tiger trust if you end up on her round. Oh, okay then. Let's actually stay silent. Weapons. I like this choice, primarily because it shows some very immediate consequences. Go with these three, find a stash of weapons. That's pretty straightforward, if you ask me. Yeah, it's pretty immediate danger. And now, personalities. This is what I consider to be the proper introduction to the second act. On your first time playing through, this is where you get to your first route proper. It signals that shit's starting to go down. I didn't intentionally set up to have all 12 traders come up in six combinations. As I sculpted things out, I realized that there'd need to be at least five different combinations for what I wanted. At that point, I knew what I had to do. The first combinations devised were Snake Dragon and Bunny Dog. On the other hand, the true combination of Ox and Sheep was purely looking at the leftovers. That's good, because it means I didn't have to say what would happen if Ox got Trader at the start. I honestly don't know whether or not he'd disclose it and try something. He's the character that's the most on edge in that regard. That That is a very good question. A very good lingering question. We solved the problem before Ox had to do anything. And he does have a certain moral ambiguity to him. Where we don't actually know what he would do. 
Obviously, sheep would kill everyone before that happened, though, so that's a moot point. You know, I'm pretty sad there wasn't a route combination where Snake and Dragon as traitors worked together. That would have been pretty fun. That would have been pretty fun. Especially if they involved... Well, that would that would be pretty deadly, to be perfectly honest. Snake being the insidious, uh, solid snake sort of smart smarts man, and uh, Dragon being the uh, Yakuza punch you in the face girl. Scary. Were these were they the fallen ones in Tiger's Rat too? Do we guard the weapon? Guard the weapons or move the weapons? I think there's a structural issue at this juncture. I think the snake route is better to start with. But also I think the smarter choice is to guard the weapons. I think most people will make that choice first. We're gonna do snake route first. If I could be a touch self-indulgent for a second. I'm aware that in an objective sense, there's nothing really special about it. But for, but for whatever reason, on a personal note, this might be my favorite mystery of the whole game. I think what I like about it is that it, how it turns two simple things into something complex. The idea that Sheep might have been alive when Dragon and Snake came in isn't too hard to come to. The idea that the window could have been locked from the inside, after the fact, by Snake, isn't hard to figure out. But these tricks are strong because they're linked. On its own, Sheep being alive changes nothing. After all, their locked room still exists. On its own, Snake being able to lock the window from the inside changes nothing. After all, it was locked when Dragon checked it. However, by combining these two relatively simple tricks, turns into something completely new and quite difficult to figure out. Okay, okay, self-indulgence over. Okay, I can see that. I may not have given mystery enough credit when I first played through this round. Anyway, anyways, what I think you're going through is completely natural. There's nothing to be ashamed of. There are two fundamental fears that I believe all humans have. A fear of change and a fear of permanence. Death fulfills both these fears quite nicely. Seeing death with your own eyes forces you to face your own mortality. Regardless of how well you knew the victim, it can be scarring. I honestly wonder why more people aren't having visceral reactions like yours. I'll just confirm th that this is Snake being genuine. I mean, not completely. But this wasn't some sort of calculated move on his part. Nor was it on mine, to be frank. Actually, when I went, when I was thinking about who should comfort Mouse at this beat, Snake jumped to mind. The fact that he was the killer behind it, and this acts as misdirection, is only a side benefit. Hmm. And just like that, I was the fourth victim. Likely not the last. It's a little weird that Snake doesn't seem to have a mystery prepared for this kill. Or who knows, maybe he does. Maybe if we zoom out the camera, we'll find that Mouse's death is also a locked room or something. Seven of clubs. Team up. At this time, at this time, I did not trust Bunny in the slightest. Oh, we're moving quickly. This is weird. This is uh, the reveal. Of what the truth of snakes. I don't know where they got the idea of four from. Over if it was just snake being a cheeky bastard and saying four is the death number or whatnot, but we know what his goal was. Cause enough discord to get everyone on different spaces. Get your ride on Snake. Of course. Of course it's stick to the plan. Even if it was dangerous, I'd believe in the group. 
And... Initially, this route doesn't have such a nice end. You had to ride on a horse instead, not wanting to be five spaces ahead of the group. However, I'd like it a little better when you forget to escape with Snake. Alright. Go with Ox. Snake is probably the best mystery adversary in this whole cast. Specifically when it comes down to the confrontation. He keeps a steady tone the whole time while continually trying to dismiss Mouse's claims. He's already ready, always ready for a retort or a counter-explanation. It's the where the confrontation asks you, the player, the most questions. Even Monkey loses herself a bit, not aiming to really convince, just a defeat. I'll give you that. Maybe I'm just dumb and didn't pick up on the clues that we were laying down at first. I don't remember the answers here. Inside the room. I don't remember the answer. All oh, right, I think I got that right. What? What's he saying about chess? Does it matter? No, I think it does. I was talking about this earlier. Chessboards are supposed to be put away during Thanksgiving break. I must have known that for certain because he was a teacher. Yet there was a game in progress when we got here. So what? Well, if he's right that Brian doesn't play chess, then who played that game? Did some random kids break in during Thanksgiving break just to play chess? Wasn't he moving the white pieces throughout the race? It was like he was playing against someone. I turned to the group. Hey, was anyone moving the chess pieces during the game? I was only met with blank stares. If that's the case, then who was he playing against? Mouse, I think you were thinking about this too much. What matters now is that we're getting out of this alive. I guess you're right. There wasn't much to think about. Oh, shoot. Uh... What else is there to get here? Okay, uh, it's all, that's all we have for Snake's route. So it's tiger time. We're gonna save here. We're gonna vote for tiger to start with. I didn't raise my hand. So we put them in a room and have the tiger stand outside of it. Or it doesn't bring this up in the other timeline, where the weapons are being guarded for perhaps obvious reasons. Huh. Fair. Fair enough. Okay, there is, wasn't much to say on this route so far. The impetus for this route was actually based on the manga series QED. And it, there are a number of cases where it does end up being the person suspected at the start. Often starts with a suspicion on the culprit, then the investigation happens. A number of odd deal details come out, making it seem less and less likely. Then by the end it's revealed that yes, it is the one suspect at the start. Those details just point to a different version of events than initially suspected. Tiger's Rat was an attempt to imitate some of that. It works. I'm not too familiar with the source material, but... works to a, to a degree, I'd say. I don't know if it works as well as you might have wanted, but it does work. On the matter of Tiger's guilt, 
Initially, if you said no, t Snake would pretty much steal your whole version of events and say it for himself. Since I figured a fair number of people might fall for this trick, I should leave more mysteries for them to solve when they go back. Yes. Tiger did it. What? Attack Tiger. Sniper Rifle. I forget. I think it's that. Forgive Tiger. Tch. That feeling when you're the traitor, so you deliberately try to push an unstable person into acting rashly to create chaos that you can take advantage of, but they end up killing you first. That feeling when... The structure of this route is one of the more experimental ones. I don't know if I love the amount of backtracking and potential tri trial and error involved with it. It certainly was unique. I think variety helps the routes feel unique. It does. I don't think getting the true end is too hard. Too, too hard here. If you just accuse Tiger and answer everything correctly, you'll get the Ox Trust you need. And you can accrue bonus Tiger Trust points before the route even starts, depending on if and how you interact with her. Even if you've missed that, the choices that gain you Tiger Trust points are mostly pretty obvious. She trusts you, she, she wants to be trusted in return. Okay, oh wow. Well. I got true end first time. First time first time every time, hell yeah. Okay, that that was all the commentary we had in the tiger route. So I think on that note we'll just go through our three choices here. Decide that piggy monkey were a safe group to explore with. I noticed that these two standing together really made him look like sisters. Hey, you were pig as, pig as monkey's accomplice instead of rooster. Seems feasible. Where they become best friends in college and, uh... Monkey makes the game to help pig launch her journalism career. Seems feasible, I buy it. Nah. So this puzzle was created because I stumbled upon the Wikipedia page of kangaroo birds and thought they were neat. It's the, the picture of a the Mrs. Bart Simpson with the, the kangaroo birds Wikipedia page, and I just think they're neat. I really would love to claim that I was carefully crafting this whole game. A good 20% of it is just whatever I happened to learn the day I was writing a given section. That's just how things go sometimes. <laughs> no shame in that. Six. Did we win? I have a lot of interests. There's so many fascinating things out in the world. Things worth learning about. Like terrorism, and torture, and murder. Alright, monkey. <laughs> oh, we got mouse route. I had that, didn't I? In the beginning, I knew that I wanted a mouse antagonist route. Unfortunately, to make her fit the blank slate rule, couldn't really come from a backstory place. Instead, I went for the angle of making Mouse a killer out of necessity. I thought it'd just be fun to play the villain. So to get past this juncture, I knew I wanted it to be hard. Hence needing the justification from finding those files with Ox. The reason I wanted it to be harder to get, to, get to was sort of because I viewed this route as non-canonical in a way. Oh. 99 out of 100 times, Mouse confesses here. In that sense, it's sort of a what-if type scenario. Confess. That makes the escape... Oh, but all around now. That makes the escape story a much harder sell. Man, I didn't think this through. I don't know why Rooster was actually dumb here. Usually he'd think through something like that. The real reason is because I wanted to end this route on a joke. The in-universe reason might be that, hey, everyone can make mistakes. Rooster was panicking this scenario. Fair enough. Okay, I don't actually want to go down this path right now. We'll come back to that. We'll go bunny and dog. Give me one of those hundred dollar bills here. Give me one million dollars, huh? 
devil would just have to say that. So I mean... This is actually just me reciting some more brain teasers I remembered. Whoops. Fair enough. <laughs> there aren't any cops like you who are authentically this... Ah, yes. Dog knows the shit. Bunny is in the shit. Just my two cents. On account of the fact that no one asked, I'd ask, I'd ask that you keep that shit to yourself unless you've got anything of substance to say. I quite like the tension set up here between Bunny and Dog. Yeah, I recall I did too. It never really pays off in the dog round, but still I think it sets up foreboding this. Yeah, true, because they, the, they have their direct game in the dog round. Puzzles! It's true! Oh, wait. Victorious and defeated. Okay. Like hell, you don't remember. So the break point of this conversation is Dragon not being a traitor, and the conversation getting this far. In other words, something breaks up the conversation before it gets to this juncture, such as a confession or Mouse's interruptions. When it gets to this point and Dragon isn't a traitor, she'll interject here because she doesn't like how much Ox is controlling things. Check, Snake agrees. Then people go check was ruled out because uh, Snake brought up that they could use the time to collect themselves and come up with a game plan to hide themselves. Such as what Snake might have done in his round. The gimmick of this branch was that I wanted to do routes that made use of the major trinkets. Honestly speaking, four routes with just this combo is probably too many, but it's just sort of how it turned out. Rethinking things, I probably would have taken one route from here and moved it to the pathway with the dragon snake trader pair. Maybe the horse tiger pair. There really is four routes here, isn't it? Isn't there? But oh well. I realized that if I kept on doing nothing, I'd be left in a group without a say. Originally, a problem with the upcoming branch was the second choice. You used to say, actually, which made it look like you were reconsidering your first choice. Now it's a bit more explicit that Mouse is speaking up about another matter. Now. Okay. Choose now! Choose, choose, choose! Let's actually do Bunny and Dog first. I think a lot of people are going to end up choosing this option before the, first, before the other one. <laughs> and then there's me who picked Ox and Dragon just because I wanted to hang out with Dragon. Because Dragon, best girl. Because to get the pair, to this pairing, you'd have to start, you'd have to search with Bunny and Dog before this. I think that their interaction adds some intrigue and makes people want to know more about their relationship. Just a loose theory. Alright, party time. Save number two. There's something else. This is the split between bunny and dog. Let's get to searching. Ooh. Hey. Dog looked over at the whip's tag, then entered a nearby room. Dog route time. What are you doing? All right, I'll admit it. I just love gambling shit and wanted to cram it into one of the routes. Sue me. I'm going to make the statement that Brian had the same level of thought as I did really got into a gambling mood and hastily added that into his plans. I mean, if he knew that, uh... In theory, you could write it into some degree of, uh... creating the major trinket stipulations to appeal to someone. The appeal to the vices of someone in the group. 
Like, you could justify it that way, I think. That's in character form. That's also true. Do -do -do. Uh, full disclosure once more, I did just put this section in after getting a cribbage app for my phone. <laughs> Take from the stuff you know, and some such. Yeah, and I've never actually played cribbage. Well, I could definitely see you just putting together the most recent games that you know about that seem to fit each character. Don't slow things down. No fair. Don't try to abuse my items. Should fill their intended purposes. Rooster coming in with the clutch fun ruiner. Thanks, Rooster. Damn. Nice idea, though, Mouse. Hmm. Let's go obvious bad end. Go look for trinkets. Dead. Okay, nothing to say there. Stay and watch. You know, for as important a plot point as it can be, I can never really utilize the win with two other people mechanic. That's true. It's threatened or offered a few times. Once or twice, Mouse can accidentally win with the traitor. No one ever straight up offers, hey, I'm the traitor, let's work together. Probably because nobody would take somebody up on that offer. Well, Pig kinda in the ox route, but that's mostly through coercion. Yeah, true. Pig coerced by Buddy and Dog. Confident smirk came across Dragon's face. Originally, Dragon had a larger gamble. I didn't want to spend too long on any one encounter. I think this route already suffers from the problem of being a bit too formulaic. Each character gets a shot at Dog. Looks like they're gonna win, but ultimately fails until Mouse steps up. Hey, yeah, it is formulaic, but it... I like it because the encounters themselves are compelling. And they were each resolved in different ways by Dog. I still like it, but it's definitely not perfect. This isn't my top five. Oh god. Now we die. Please run. Wait, I thought we ran for it. Desperation really messed up Bunny. Hold up. Before we get back to that. I thought I made a run for it. You know, I should be better than these sorts of bad ends. When I set out to write this game, I wanted to make it so that all the bad ends had some real substance to them. They weren't just make a bad choice and die. Boy, did I not follow through on that. There are some very obvious immediate bad end choices, which kind of ruined, kind of put a damper on me taking polls for what choices you want to choose, because sometimes we just get warped into a bad end and go right back to the other choice in the poll anyways. And it's just, whoops, that just happened. Even still, I think that usually that the shorter bad end still had an interesting angle or revealed something new. For this, it's pretty empty. Alright, anyways, tell Bunny the number. Desperation really messed up Bunny's reasoning here. You could say that it was at least worth the shot, but in no universe does this really work. If you evaluate everyone's self-interest, nobody benefits from helping him here. He still had an out by a good draws for the deck. After this little stunt, even if he pulled a comeback, he'd be screwed. So he revealed himself as the other. As the true personality. Whereas if he kept his mouth shut, if he succeeded, he'd be in a fantastic position. Let me just recall. Yep, 
Yep, Bunny is victorious. And Bunny just try totally heel turned in that and tried to get them to kill themselves for his survival. Like that's gonna work. <laughs> oh, just the question. Ah, yeah. Who read the whips tag first in your group? Then. Ah. Uh, that would get his interference and she'd be executed. I would? Try and get Mouse executed. It's a pretty sick trick dog tries here. Even using other people's turns to try and take down the competition. Since I think every person's villain route is showing them in their perfect element facing down the rest of the group. Horse is placed in a battlefield. Bunny is put in a game of social prowess. Snake is put in a murder mystery. Dog gets to prove his might through gambling. The one thing he's truly skilled at. No comment. That is true. I think that the politics surrounding the specific way the rules of this trinket play out and how that interacts with everyone's self-interest is low-key pretty interesting. It is. It's just one of my favorites. I suspect it's not as engaging to most people as it is to me, but I think the sort of metagame of how everyone's working around the whip really helps tie this route together. I don't know, I guess I just like how everyone has to weigh the good of the group against the good of the individual, and think two steps ahe ahead about other people's incentives. It pulls together a lot of elements, how both the traders' personalities work, the physical strengths of the individual players, how the trinket works, people's tolerance for selfishness. Eventually even things like weapon advantage and appealing to the Jade Emperor are factored in. I just think it's neat. Me too. Me too, friend. Snake's game now? More than three chances of killing yourself, failing that I have one in three chances of surviving. Achieving two and three odds, this sort of gamble is perfectly acceptable to me. You got a 66 and two thirds percent chance. I drew a 33 and one third percent. You got a 138 percent chance at beat bet. At beat me. That's not actually, um, actually not how math works. Snake pulling out the Scott Steiner math there. But there is a super duper minor sub theme, minor sub theme in this game. Snake not being good at math. <laughs> By that I mean he makes math mistakes at like two other points. Fair enough. I'm a real scaredy cat. Or a scaredy dog, and now he's dead. Initially, this section was going to be an actual mini game where the opponent had an AI and the rules were random. I'd say that I chose to not do that to add a sense of deliberacy and care with how the game played out. But to be honest, it was just a lot of work that I didn't want to do. Fair enough. Still, I did put some thought into how Dog plays the ga this game. That much is true. For, for instance, you'll notice he rolls doubles suspiciously often. Why? Well, the answer is found at the Ox route, where he mentions how easy it is to flip a die when people are preoccupied on their own shit. It's impossible to do this once the game has properly started. When Mouse is looking at her own stuff, he can get away with it. Also try and think through his thought process for every move he makes. I want him to be very smart, obviously, but not like god mode intelligence. Because he can still misread Mouse if she plays carefully enough. The game can actually go a couple different ways. You could win handily or make things super close. I wonder how many people will be able to beat him first try. I did not. I suspect not many, but I could be mistaken. I actually really like this game. I don't remember how to beat it, so... It's just a thing that I like. I like how it turned out. I decided to try and mess with Dog. I'd lose if I played naturally. Maybe an unorthodox play would knock him off balance. 1-6. Dog clearly was not, was not expecting this response. After a while, he spoke up. Two fives. Two fives? I had no idea where that came from, but it was definitely wrong. Call! Call! I showed my hand, consisting of a two and a four. He scowled and showed his hand. It was a five. Which meant? So, uh, I win. Seems like it. Yes! Hell yeah! That was a win, clean and simple. No tricks, no cheats. I had beaten Dog. Seeing that he was lost, he had lost, he didn't get angry or sad or happy. His face just became empty.
Dog and Snake have similar strategies, justifications of kill everyone because there's probably a traitor masterminded the group. Hmm, that they would be the types to be thinking ahead like that. Obviously seeing Dog's actual actions. He does immediately suspect something is going on. And does take steps to try and do something about it. So, it makes sense. In this case, it's probably a bit exaggerated. But Although how they get to these conclusions, their philosophy on their actions, and their end goals are both pretty different. Of the two, Dog is a lot more spiteful and cyn cynical. While Snake is somewhat more idealistic and careful. Notably, Dog's willing to sacrifice himself, whereas Snake would certainly prefer against it. Perhaps both tellingly is that they, the fact that both of them already only act on the suspicion when they're already the traitor. I think this suggests that both of them don't really have faith in the theory until they can use it as an excuse to justify their actions. Actions that, at their core, they already wanted to take. For Snake, survival. For Dog, destruction. That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. It's like you could say you could call it an excuse to justify their actions, but you could also look at it as motivation to take action in the sense that if I'm going to die, I may as well go through with this and take the mastermind with me, even if it takes everyone else with me, too. Dragon ends up killing a lot of the traitors now that I think about it. Huh. Fair. Everybody dies. Everybody dies. Dice, 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 dice. Dog, 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 dog. Haunts. This is eerily simple for a death card. Suppose we load up and... Do bunny now. That's all there is for, uh... Dog. Would ever want to activate that item? Someone who wanted to plunge the game into chaos, that's who. This is an item that pretty much guarantees massive amounts of bloodshed. It's also fun. Yeah, true. Oh, you shut up. Ox snapped. So this upgiving plan from Ox is less than ideal. I know that. I'm sure many well-thought people can come up with better ideas without too much effort. But in their defense, they only have a handful of minutes and are struggling for their lives, so this is about the best they can accept. His face was flushed with frustration. An understandable reaction to the horrible situation we had been thrust into. It's obvious that whoever activated this trinket had ill intent. We should assume that it was either the victorious personnel. Oh, okay, why am I reading this? So, dead. And I'll be the other. The big mistake of this group is just letting other people volunteer like this. Let's let opportunists like Dog get in on the action pretty easily. Great teamwork and choosing efficiency, guys. Just what we wanted to throw things off and kill more of you. Tiger and Ox were targeted because they were positive and group pillars. Without them, it's far more likely to fall into chaos, which the traitors obviously like. Very much so. Intentionally targeted. This thought was originally going to be more of a shifting factions, Lord of the Flies, paranoia type affair. I don't think it ended up exactly like that, but I'm still satisfied more or less with how things shook out. Like, you definitely feel the divided allegiances. Here. This was the outcome Snake foresaw, then I must commend his foresight. This was the outcome Snake foresaw. Don't give an asshole too much credit. 
see if I remember the exact outcome here. Right, so they were... They have to unite. We have to unite. With both... With both factions trying for their survival, they have to unite their votes, or else they die. Or else the other the other side gains the advantage and puts them down. Hmm. So what did he find? Token out of his pocket displayed it proudly. Right on! You say I got a nose for this sort of stuff. Incredibly infuriating that you can find this stuff without safe while seemingly not trying. Why, jealous? A little. Doctors end up fighting quite a few trinkets throughout the routes. This is fair. In fairness to those who thought they should have remembered this from the start, the concept of stealing tablets from dead bodies has to be discovered in every route. Ah, good point. Because people don't start dropping dead until after after the route splits. People who've seen killers routinely clean their victims of tablets, this may seem like a big oversight. But in the heart of things, I think it's reasonable to miss it. Yeah, that the thought only ever occurs to anyone once the route splits. It's like it doesn't happen at upstream at all. Buddy jumps ship here because he knows the center won't hold with the other group. Plus, he doesn't want to execute the other traitor. So long as this other traitor exists, people's logic is greatly reduced, and he has an ally he can count on. Hmm. I suppose his thought being that the traitor is the other traitor might be in our group. And thus, they were balancing themselves out at this point. Don't use it! Oh, we're already dead. Use it! What's the idea in this case? Oh shit, I just saved over one of my things I didn't want to save over. Alright, let's go back here. Sure, good idea. Okay, initially I thought a lot more of this would have this sort of vibe. The... The, uh, Danganronpa discussion battle. An Among Us-style way of sussing out who's been acting sus. But that game wasn't yet big when I wrote it. <laughs> this naturally came in after the game got... Big. I trust Dragon. And Sheep gets voted. Poor Sheep. It might seem a bit surprising that someone like her got voted out before some of the other characters present. But a situation like this, being passive just makes you a target. Yeah, she's not going to participate because that's her character, and she just gets killed off easily. But he checks, he sighs, a weak personality, not victorious, not defeated. This is one of the trickier checks in the game. A lot of people you may need to make two choices that reduce your target status to survive. However, based on some of the earlier choices, you can actually have a lower target status and afford a mistake, or even two. This is interesting. Oh, we died. We became a target. Shitty idea. 
I trust monkey and dog. And we died. I trust dragon. Bunny turning on dog is probably a mistake here. Doesn't buy him as much goodwill as he thinks it's going to. His defense, since Dog didn't really designate a clear target this round, they couldn't really coordinate. Dog's perspective, pulling a last-minute suspicion on horse might have been the best might have been the best move. Dog in the bathroom. This dog targets us if we have too many. Too many target points. Dragon speaks up. Bunny turns on dragon. Bunny turns on dog. That convinces dragon, bunny, and dragon probably join him to vote out, vote out horse. With the biggest physical threat out of the way, and it's a, in a 2v3 situation, they're looking real pretty. Cycled in fairly in and out. <laughs> ah, yes. Everyone shut up. I shout at them with all the emotions I've been holding up. I turned to be a look disturbed by my outburst. I didn't care. The death if you get this wrong is a little odd. Buddy should be content to escape with any two of you. To be honest, it might have been better to just let you get out alive with a traitor. I think that's a lot less viscerally satisfying. My justification is that Bunny's planning on dotting his I's and crossing his T's. He can get away with just straight up killing the remaining three ladies. He's gonna go with a plan that guarantees his safety. And removes witnesses of his crimes. It's in character for Bunny, at least. Yeah, pretty much. So, let's get this wrong. Stab. Throw it out. Gusher, why? And we're dead. And there's a toilet. Was it nearly as effective as it was. The voting horse, you guided the conversation so horse was one of the options we were voting on to tie it. Not gonna lie, this little trick is one of my favorite deceptive moments in this whole game. It's minor but clever, I think. Yeah. Sort of suggesting without openly accusing. Backstory is a little ham I must admit, yeah? It does play that way in, in universe. With Bunny trying to gain sympathy before he makes his pitch. You get defeated, he's still looking for an angle to get out of this mess. That's a good point. This is Bunny openly exaggerating. Oh, wrong button. Where is Benui? That's Snake. Tiger. Fox. Which one was Benui? Ah, oh, here. I think we got it. Yeah. I think that covers Bunny. We're at the hour mark now. And we're four routes in. So it's Ox and Dragon time. So now we'll save. Let's do this. Gets us Ox's route. Yeah, yeah this is a bad team comp. Individually, Dragon or Ox could work well with Mouse. Together they get along even worse than Dragon and Bunny, because Bunny at least knows how to try and accommodate. Yeah, they clash really hard.
Blood from the dead body of the one who poisoned you. So, Ox Route. Come out on the table. This might be the weakest route, in my opinion. Also one of the shortest. This is true. It's thematically interesting, but I can see where you're coming from. The issue was I had to make a route where Ox acted as the antagonist. Out of all the characters, that's the least in his nature. The route was also built around a gimmick I wanted to try out, where you had limited investigation attempts, and based on what you found out, you could solve none, part, or all of it. I still like that element, and I think that this route has some neat moments. That's a little underwhelming in some other areas. I think its greatest sin, in my opinion, might be it spoils the traitor. I identities for the other routes in this branch, in perhaps the least climactic way. I say, on, on one hand, this, this would be the one to move off of this branch. On the other hand, yeah, the, the traitors in this instance are actually involved in his route. So that's kind of hard to do. Whoa, fucking metal. <laughs> so, yeah. I quite like the Dragon Mount's partner's dynamic. Yes, please. I want them to be friends after the game. After the end of the game. I'm sad it doesn't show up much outside this round. What? In some senses, I think Dragon might be the only other person besides Ox that Mouse could be actual friends with after all this said and done. I agree. I want this in my life. Okay, now I have to remember how to do this round. Dog's important. Wish that this was going to be another game of Liar's Dice. I figured that'd be a little weird happening in the middle of this arc, especially when it's the finale of another. Interesting. Now to get dog, we go higher. Mouse, what are you doing? Trust me. And there's a six. Well, how about that? We do actually learn more about Dragon in this route than I ever expected. Is this the only place we learn about Dragon's boyfriend? Uh, who else can we learn about? We need to interrogate Benui eventually. Let's interrogate Sheep. This conversation does end up being a complete waste of time. Thanks, Lemus. Tiger! I think the right answer is Tiger, Dog, and Bunny. The Chief Prosecutor is one of the characters I considered making a tertiary character, like Oliver Bowen. Ultimately, I decided that it didn't add enough. Brian and Oliver as non-cast member alive characters were good enough. And the Chief Prosecutor had a role in this. Like, it's heavily implied that the Chief Prosecutor had a role in this, relating to Ox's role in the... in the Bowen trial. So you could have gotten away with it. Oh wow, okay. That's just dead. So, we did Tiger. Snake time. I did, in fact, name the trinket Kafka's Toxin before I knew how it, was, how it would specifically work. I just liked the story enough, so I knew I'd tie it in in some way. Once a person intends on drinking the poison, one cannot entertain ideas of not drinking it. Drink the poison with payment, drink the poison without payment, or refuse to drink the poison without payment. Old Kafka's toxin. 
All right, let's go talk to Benui. What do you know about corruption in the Morris case? I think we gained from that. Nah. Dragon is impressed. Pragmatic. I'm just, I'm just worried you're going to be one of those hippie, we need to get everyone out all alive types. Fair. We'll just die again. And we're dead. We have to actually do the investigation right. We do Tiger to learn about... Ox being the patsy. Dog. Get dog's info. Underrated line. The tie into Dogs Round, I think. I need to play you again sometime. But we got our live, I promise I'll take you up on that offer. What do you know? A reason to try. I like that. Just need to put that brat in jail and publicly end this case. Like, this is the route that really. I think personally. Slammed home for me that there was some corruption at the core of the Aaron Morris trial. Uh, we gotta get Bunny. You wanna get Bunny to admit to it? Where have you searched for trinkets? Spanish classroom. Spanish classroom on the second floor! Subtle pig. Suspicious. As well as the French and German classrooms. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. This whole thing takes on a slightly different layer if you've done the rooster rat. Oh. Play bunny. Just to recall, bunny's, a, bunny's route is... She activated the major trinket. Why do you bother going through with that? He was caught anyways. Nonsense claim. And that doesn't work. I believe technically we believe... Pig survives. Ox had drank Bunny's blood. Why was he dying? This is the contradiction that I mentioned a while back with Kafka's toxin. We find Kafka's toxin in a different route. Where the instructions say that if you do nothing, you survive. But if you drink the blood of the one who poisoned you, you die. But Bunny didn't poison Ox. This is just a variation of the final ending. Leave Bunny. Slurping. Slurping. It was Ox drinking pig's blood. Fuck, that was what he had to do, wasn't it? God, that's disgusting. Fuck you, Brian. Hopefully that should do it.
That was horrible. Let's see with a straight face. Mm -hmm. We'll all live for a long time. Was it necessary? I believe so. I'm gonna say maybe, maybe, maybe you could explain it by saying that Brian's ruling was that Bunny coerced Pig into doing it. So if Ox drinks Bunny's blood, Ox dies. Ox killed Pig and drank her blood, so. This route does not end well in either instance. Does not win well in either instance. It's also more telling knowing that the twist with the routes. Now, every time in the true ending path where they mention these aren't the right deaths, so we search for another path. Yeah, that's just a monkey coming to the end of the line. Finding the, uh... That doesn't quite... Doesn't end with, uh... Mouse Snake and Dragon's death, so she has to try again. So... That's it for that's it for Ox's route. I think if we do this, we get dragon. Yep. But this six people now have defeated are victorious personalities. You know what that means? Dragon's being real legit here. Check these things. It thinks it is fairer to have half survive and half die on their own merits. Maybe there's something to that. I disagree, but maybe there's something. The point she massively failed to consider was the fact that these rules are deceptively brutal. Likely this setup ends in a three-person or even a zero-person survival rate is pretty high. Yeah, like you could end up with you could have ended up with both the traders in one group. Which would have been your three-person win. Or just everything could massively fall apart. Early on, I decided not to reuse any major trinkets for any routes. If there were any major trinket I'd be fine breaking that rule for, it'd be this one. I don't know, I just really like the group dynamics this thing's set up. I think the war between the four teams has a lot of possibilities. Don't get me wrong, I like how this route came out. I think there's a lot of potential in how things could play out differently. Like horse route. The limiting factor on this is that is the fact that this game is sadly very first person. So showing scenes with the other group would be a difficult task. Like maybe if you reuse this, sh shake it up so that it groups you based on your position in the race and not on the board, so to speak. Or just groups you up in other arbitrary ways that change, at least changes Mouse's group dynamics. Still, I'd read a Rooster Dog Pig team up fan team up fanfic. Oh god, that would be fun. Since then, I saw that someone someone entered the back of the cafeteria. They actually been in the back of the room for a while. Random fun fact: nobody will ever pick up on. The track entitled Dance of the Snakes begins playing here. Uh, this is a subtle nod to the fact that this plan was largely masterminded by Snake. The more you know. Do, do, do. Ah. Oh, is this the, the death room plan? Fire! This is very much the death room plan. 
grab the window. Immediately repeating the thing that got horse killed wasn't a great idea. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It really wasn't. Let's not do that. Just realized if Dragon's Pack had the victorious personality, Horse's group was actually on our side. Fuck. I worry some might find Mouse's group's actions excessively dumb here. I would posit that feeling will. That feeling will often be brought out by dramatic irony. That is, that is to say, players who already know Bunny is full of shit. Mouse's perspective, I think that's a reasonable enough mistake to make. First to pick dog. It's defeated. Just examining here. To recall. Dragon, snake, and bunny. I just rewound a bit just to say like getting a grasp of what we were getting at here. And I think to come down to come down to it Buddy scammed us into helping them kill horse and then tried to get us killed too. Despite the fact that the ones who would be actively trying to kill the others would be the ones with the victorious or defeated personalities. Which is why they came out of it thinking that... Shit. Bunny's group probably has the victorious personality. And the other group... looked to be uh, getting a cheap ambush. on the winners of the fight. I, I don't know if there's clear evidence that the, the fourth group would be defeated, but I think it's a fair enough mistake that Bunny made a convincing enough argument that you reasonably expect a normal person to believe that it's the right thing to do to kill Hans before he goes Hans and kills everyone else. Not really registering the fact until the other group heel turned on us and tried to kill us that, uh, hey, maybe the guys who want to actively go do a killing uh, aren't exactly on our side <laughs> here. So it's perfect, perfectly reasonable. I think the only the only reason anyone might find it unreasonable is coming off a of bunny's route, or one of the routes where bunny gets revealed, saying that maybe this guy's full of shit. But it's fair. Oh. Oh shit. I thought I wasn't the only one ambushing us. Rooster grabbed that monkey, trying to pin her down. However, through an act of seeming, seeming good luck, Monkey was somehow able to slip out of Rooster's grapple. Immediately, she started sprinting down the hall. Rooster chased after her. Huh, wonder how that happened. <laughs> so, Bunny, Dragon, and Snake are going after us. Rooster, Dog, and Pig. Monkey, sheep, and horse are the remaining group. Huh, what a laugh. You wanna know what happened with the last crazy bitch who came at me with a knife? 
Oh, I think I played this before a before a tiger route, so. Well that doesn't that that line reads differently now. I like to throw in little little lines like these wherever I can. I've noticed picked up on a lot of them. Mostly the ones that I stumbled upon chronologically. Ones that are unassuming at first, but if you know, you know. That's a good one. Just sat down and died, then we would die. Well, I felt some obligation to Tiger and Ox. I had just as much obligation to everyone else. I would argue that maybe this choice for a mouse is the morally correct choice. But it's not narratively satisfying, so it must be punished. Guess we will die. Ooh. Hell, why was I wearing Rooster's clothes? But down the hallway, I saw a body. Hawks, why was he lying down like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's me. You might be wondering how I got in this situation. Don't tell me. <laughs> and we're dead. If we don't, if we don't accept defeat. Oh yeah, the kidnap rooster plan. We killed rooster. How stupid do you think they are? This is a really dumb plan, but it's kind of funny, so I like it. Ah oh, yes, the fake rooster plan. Oh. Had to deal with dogs. Stood before you with a deadly serious expression. Guess we both playing a double cross the other. How ironic. Fucked up thing here is that dog was willing to kill whoever was under the mask. Probably Mouse, but even Rooster. What are you on? Just try to kill your pack member. My pack member? Oh, no, 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 no. Dog and chain. You've already lost. What? Oh, out of the world. I killed Snake. Maybe your group is already dead. What? What? <laughs> Ox, for the love of God, don't blow this. I'm not gonna buy that dog did this, so I had to sell her a story. Alright. Oh, yeah. Dragon, the unyielding. I thought of this exploit and immediately knew I wanted someone to use it. I had to be sparingly, in the right moment. At, after beginning to write this route, I knew this was the moment. I succeeded in making Dragon a brat badass and prolonged the fight against her. I liked the moment enough to commission a CG for it. It was very much worth it. No point to killing us. The only thing killing us achieves is more death. That's the point. And Dragon rushed at me and beat the shit out of me. Her fists were enough. I lied. I didn't actually kill Snake. Dog did. What? Dragon stopped at her tracks. Make sure none of us survived if he couldn't. Yeah. I don't remember the right answers here, but... I'm sorry. You're right. Six B lines instead of four? Try to make it up to you. Then perish. That just... <laughs> Dragon just literally went there. And a pack to protect too. I'd help Ox and Tiger too. They didn't deserve any of this. Maybe I would have given up. Letting them die when they counted on me. That's not a line I'm not willing to cross. Dragon glared at me. And the raging energy seemingly depleted. Dragon just stormed off toward a nearby column and leaned against it. It's clear she was low on energy. Okay, we win. That's all we have to say about Tiger's Rat. I think Tiger's Rat kind of goes up in estimation for me there. That was really good. Okay. That's an hour and a half in already. Oh. Good Ox, Dragon, Dog, Bunny, Snake, and Tiger. So we're halfway there. Now I gotta remember how to get to the other paths. 
snake, 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 snake. You have to become monkey? This was mouse route. Ponce. So, monkey, pig, mouse, ponce, rooster, sheep. Alright, this has already been an hour and a half, Jesus Christ. I'll perhaps save that for next time, then.